Hey, fun fans. We're getting close to reaching 1 million views on YouTube, and to help us celebrate 254, the Cheesy Poos has provided us an awesome t-shirt to give away. All you have to do to be entered is to be a YouTube subscriber and let us know in the comments which team you're from. You can enter once in every YouTube video uploaded through the month of September, so make sure you comment below. So one of the most notable and confusing changes for the 2020 season are the rules around anti-collaboration. Um, <laughs> we're all starting to wonder, how will this be regulated? Um, how much is this going to suck? How much of a target are you going to have on your team's pit area? Um, so how do you guys think that this will be regulated? And what do you see being the pros, if any, and the cons of it? So let's see. Uh, Adam, we'll start with you on this one. So I have, have a bunch of thoughts here. Too much for the show today. But uh, <laughs> I, I think a lot of people would agree in the community that it would be good to not have cheesecake. Um, the difficulty, though, is it's hard to make a clean set of rules that bans cheesecake that also doesn't make wholesome activity of helping other teams look bad to other teams. So even if you are several steps away from cheesecake, you're not doing anything that's even close to violating the spirit of the rules. You know, there's a risk of other teams watching you. There's a risk of a you know inspector going too far with things, and you know having all sorts of false accusations and you know a lot of drama there. You'll also have teams, uh, like you know Mike Crosetto in 1678 is going to do this, that try to figure out exactly where that line is. Because what he's thinking is we're playing other teams that are also figuring out exactly where that line is. Um, and obviously there's going to be a lot of animosity and controversy there, and it's going to be called differently event to event. Um, you know, This is really the first time FIRST has tried to define how you can work with other teams. Um, and we, you know, we haven't really gone there before, and we haven't gone there across what 100 plus events now with different LRIs and different cultures everywhere. So, you know, this could be totally fine, but I, I could see a lot of bad individual experiences coming out of this, and taking a couple of years to to get a rule set that really minimizes that that hostility. Yeah. So, you know, you read Frank's blog post. It's not you don't even get into the rules release yet and like within two lines it says we believe teams will get the most out of fir the frc when they're directly responsible for their robot and the major mechanisms on their robot and then like without skipping a beat it says we strongly encourage teams to assist each other this is part of the first ethos so like adam like you were saying it's really hard to you know encourage teams to help each other but then you don't want them to help too much right you don't want them to basically create a mechanism for someone hand it over to them um you look at the blue box and there's on on i1 and there's just a lot of interpretation that can happen there you know they give you some examples of major mechanisms where um you know used to manipulate a game piece position a robot for in-game task um, but then right after that they say gearbox assembly is not a major mechanism uh cots items so like can a supplier create a whole mechanism, which, you know, there's elevators, there's uh, there's some great products out there. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I it's, it's going to be really interesting to see kind of how this plays out, I think, because um, there could be teams that uh, just depending on the inspection and they're the inspectors, kind of how it goes at your event, um, there could be some hurt feelings for sure. Uh, there could be... You, know, you hope you don't, you never see that, but just kind of monitoring of teams and uh, maybe over scrutinizing what they're doing in terms of helping teams, helping them getting them running. Um, so I I don't know. There's there's some risk here, and I think we need a little bit better definition of that I one rule uh, before the season comes. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think there's a lot of vagueness here because they were clearly trying to get rid of you know it's been like 2015. Um, I mean, there's a bunch of teams on Einstein that were really only there because they gave can grabbers to other teams and my alliance was one of them, you know, and 2016, you got the blockers and, uh, 2017, you had some teams who made climbers to climb ropes better and more accurately and stuff like that. But I mean, but then you have like this team compliance statement that you have to sign an inspection, you, a mentor and a student. And at the end it says it's products of our own team's work. What does our team's work mean? Because, I mean, there's teams out there who, you know, publicly post their stuff 
uh, from the beginning. And, and then if I see that and I really like it and I, I build it now, is that my work? Is it their work? Like whose work is it? And, uh, but I mean, but then also if you look in I-5 EY, it talks about work only designated in other teams pit with permission from that team. I mean, are you, am I working in their pit with their permission to build them something for their robot? I mean, and I think there's lots of stuff here and there there's like, like uh, Adam was saying, I mean, there's teams, I mean, I'm thinking about it. Like what's the, like, there's a gray area here. What constitutes, you know, following the rules and what constitutes breaking the rules. Like, I mean, there's, there's things I've thought of that will get around giving a team a mechanism, but still allow them to make the mechanism quickly and you know, and still in the time frame where if, you know, I just gave them some, the whole mechanism, they could bolt it on the robot versus if they made it, like there's, I think there's ways to get around this. So I think the, the Q and A that they're starting, I think we're going to get a lot of the same questions yeah. and hopefully it, <laughs> it clarifies this. And I think, I think first wanted to get rid of cheesecake. They don't want to get rid of helping other teams. Cause I think, I mean, like the GP award is basically who helps the most teams at an event for the most part, like, like it's obviously an award that they care about. I don't think they're just going to now get rid of the GP award because they wrote rules vaguely because first is a organization that doesn't like to give hard limits on things. So mm -hmm. I think hopefully the Q and A's clear this up somewhat. Yeah, I think it definitely will. So we had a comment from chat. Um, hum eight or uh, said, I feel that the new anti cheesecake rules are because you can bring anything that is a robot or a mechanism into an event um, I feel that it's to prevent bringing someone else's robot into an event and competing with it, which I think would be, that's a crazy extreme. Um, well, robot and major mechanism. Yeah. I mean, they specify that you can't like give a team your spare climber or a spare whatever, you know, it's got to be mm. kind of like you give, you can give them the plans to it and help, help them fabricate it and that sort of thing. But um yeah, I mean, like well, what a, constitutes a mechanism? Because I mean, it, like everything that you read on the rules, it always has an electrical mechanical aspect to it. So like if I give them an assembled part that can't isn't powered and can't operate unless it's powered, and then they just get on the PA system and ask another team for a gearbox, and my team happens to be that team who also has that gearbox, but I gave it to them because they asked for it. Like, you know, there's there's some crazy things that can happen here. I can just imagine that, like, it's like a scavenger hunt for putting together, like, a major mechanism. Like, this team just goes and, like, precisely asks for specific things, and, like, they're just kind of scattered throughout the event at different teams, and magically a major mechanism comes together. Um, so Ferrari77 said, I'd like to see the topic of multiple events discussed. Will it be worth it for teams to go... To multiple events or should they stay back and take the extra time to practice and iterate at home i think oh, most teams would be better oh, off at the event. event yep at the event yeah so why do you think it would be better at the event obviously it's way more costly um if you're doing a regional it's what like 4k and if it's a district event it's another 1000 plus whatever it takes to get there you know, it takes a lot of skill and a lot of knowledge, a lot of discipline to have really effective practice at home. Um, and even if that goes great, you're going to miss out on all that team interaction, all the strategy you're going to gain from others, all the immediate lessons learned. And, you know, maybe we didn't need to optimize that mechanism to do 12 balls a match because, you know, the fourth best team in our event was doing five balls a match. Um, and it's a lot more real where you're there experiencing it and, you know, seeing where you rank and seeing the results of your actions directly versus watching other regionals and then being like, well, that's not going to be our team because our team's going to be able to do X, Y, Z. So I think most teams, you know, probably all but 50 are universally going to be better off going to an event, you know, within reason, like to some event nearby, um, not like flying across the country just to make the point of like, oh, I went to an event and it didn't help me out. But yeah, mm -hmm. most teams will be better off going to an event. Agreed. Practice, even if it's, you know, at an event is always better because you're with other teams. Um, there's six robots on the field. You're like, you get better each match you're on there. I mean, I, my drivers were always like, like I would say not terrible, but terrible match one of an event. And then like driving their face off in the, in the 
playoffs. And I'm like, why weren't you doing this two days ago? And like, we would have been seated first instead of seventh and begging teams to pick us, you know? So um, going to event is always going to be better than skipping events non-financially. I, I just want to clarify from uh, Ferrari 77. Um, he said that it was more specifically regarding a third district event that doesn't count. Uh, so if you're, I'm, I'm just going to read this verbatim. So you're losing workshop <laughs> time and practice time at home. Um, but Adam kind of answered that a little bit as well too. So how do you feel versus the third district event? Oh man, third district event all the way. If, if you have the bandwidth to do it and the time and I mean, the money is, what, it's like a grand to go to that third event. I mean, it's so much cheaper than, uh, well, registration wise, you still have all the logistical hotels. Oh yeah. Yeah. All that stuff, but... yeah, for sure. For sure. From a registration mm -hmm. fee standpoint definitely cheaper and i mean like you guys are saying experience is the best experience right like you, you can't recreate that feel the the feeling behind the glass the pressure of an actual match um i mean like you were saying eric like it's amazing go go watch your very first qualification match last year and then watch your last match of the year and it's <laughs> almost like painful to watch that first match um because night and day difference right your drive team gets better as the more matches you play. Adam, do you feel that way after watching your very first match? And then I'm doing know, it right now. Let me get back to you. I'm like, two minutes. <laughs> I was going to say, cause we, I think Tyler had a, uh, one of the yeah. outside matches playing yeah. and I was just like, damn, I, I, I don't think he had a good I mean, year at all. So may, maybe this is just rosy that. memory, but I remember us starting off pretty well. Like usually it's more uh, like Ryan is saying and our first match is pretty bad, but this is a pretty good year for us coming out of the gate being pretty ready. Yeah, I was going to say, you guys seem pretty on point all year. Um, I know as a team that is in districts and just loves to compete every single weekend, um, the the be like being there in person is always so much more valuable because, I don't know, at least for us, like with our mentors and our students, if we're at an event versus spending, you know, the weekend at our shop, um, you know, they're, the kids are way more locked in at an event because they know that it's like, even if it doesn't count, um, always know that they have to be on their game and you know it matters one way or another because we paid for it <laughs> and you can still win some... trophies yeah so exactly I, I mean at the end of the day yeah like it doesn't count for district points but mm -hmm. yeah you can still take home that trophy and i know my kids are a lot more excited when we take home a trophy than when we don't so yep i think our students uh performed better at our last district event that didn't count and that we did not do any like heavy team preparation for which i was impressed by but also slightly pissed off i was like where was this at our first district event why didn't you care as much but yeah experience is everything especially we've seen it time and time again too with the field elements like they're not going to get any more i don't know like basic or real at like at home, uh, like 2016, for example, all of those field elements were totally different on the field. Or even like if you don't have a full field to practice, sometimes it completely changes, you know, how it is practicing at home yeah. versus on a real field. Most, most teams can't recreate the field elements super accurately, right? There's always like some weird little quirk that isn't in the team drawing or something. And then you show up and you're like, what is this? <laughs> those, those <laughs> great... Drums. That metal plates on the, the hopper in 2018, we didn't have it on our fields, and it broke our Omni wheels every match we ran autonomous trying to do it. So we just stopped. I mean, that's not the only reason we stopped, because we weren't good at that autonomous. But, like, we started running out of wheels, and those wheels weren't cheap. So it was like, let's just move to something else. Crazy. So some of the other comments and questions from chat that we got. Um, let's see. Limrun said, I expect we'll see different defense configurations depending on which game objectives the opponent alliance is better against. I think that's a, a pretty interesting point to make. It's not necessarily um, like offense, modular robots, but defense. And Corsetto brought up a good point to me before of a 233's alliance kind of shoving batteries on uh, exploding bacon a bunch of years ago. It's like the purpose of, you know, Changing the robot for defense purposes, obviously don't use batteries for it, but do yeah. you guys foresee, um, like we said before, like blockers and stuff? Yeah. Modular I mean, robots are hard. Yeah. I mean, what happens if you put a bunch of ballast on a robot this year? Is that, like, that's not a mechanism. 
<laughs> what is that? It, it'll be a mechanism at at least 13 events next year and yeah. not the other 100. <laughs> I yeah, think there's that? other things you can do to be good at defense. Uh, I think there was a lot of good defense done this year. And I think if teams watch what teams did this year on defense, like you didn't necessarily like good defense isn't like, you know, bumper to bumper. You can just get in their way, slow them down. So it's seconds fee seconds. So I don't think there's a lot of things. Um, you know, this year was kind of weird because there weren't any protected scoring zones. There were just protected acquiring zones. So, mm -hmm. I mean, everything's, you know, it's, it varies each year. I think that with the, the new rules, I think, and how successful Swerve robots were this year, I think a lot of teams are going to jump on the Swerve train and kill themselves with it. <laughs> and especially if you watched uh, IRI this year, I mean, 2767 just destroyed 2056 with their swerve on defense. And I think a lot of teams are going to see that. I'm like, we can do that. Let's just focus on swerve. And swerve isn't a one-year thing. It's a iteration. Like, you need to do it. And I think teams are going to jump into things that they saw successful in the previous years and realize and think, oh, we have all this extra time. And I think they're going to fall in a pit. Yeah. I will say, for all the teams out there wanting to do swerve, first, you shouldn't do it. But if you're going to do it, <laughs> I highly encourage you to buy it either from, uh, you know, Patrick, I think it's Swerve Drive Specialties or RC uh, at West Coast Products and not because I'm buddies and want them to see them uh, do well, but because th their stuff's great and you're not going to design something better than that. You know, you might be able to post something on Chief that's 0.7 pounds lighter. It's not going to work better. Uh, so buy those, focus on the code, better yet use their code that they posted um, and just de-risk it as much as possible. But Adam, more likely, don't run it. Adam, we just had 254 on our FRC Deep Dive show recently and they talked all about Swerve for quite some time and how they might be moving to it. So not quite sure if you're fully transitioned into your new team yet, uh, but you might <laughs> need to reconsider that. You know, I haven't fully been read into uh, our disclosures and in, in what we're allowed to say publicly. So <laughs> I will hold off for now. That's why it still says slash nine seven three. Yeah, <laughs> he's in. He's on his super secret probation period he's, yet. So well, he's also in this like really great position where he won world champs and he also silver medaled apparently at, at world champs last year. So yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> so one of the um, points that is kind of freaking me out for next season because um as adam brought up before like oh you know at 13 events like it'll be good but at the rest it won't um inspectors so obviously with the frc season coming up we have all of our key volunteer trainings that will be happening soon and i'm i'm curious how lri training will go this year i'm sure it's going to be a boatload of fun for all of them and i'm sure that we'll see some great information um posted on chief delphi and other places but what do you guys anticipate um I guess, like in terms of things that you're really not looking forward to or anxious about in terms of inspectors. Um, one of the things that Corsetto brought up to me because I asked him <laughs> to help me out with the show because I know this is something that he cares deeply about. But one of the points that he brought up that I thought was interesting is the thought of um, inspectors kind of being overbearing on the number one seated alliance versus... Um, the number eight seated alliance or teams that are going to just kind of go and spy on other teams and then be like, Oh, nope, that kid over there, he's, he's working on a, you know, major mechanism with another team. Um, what do you guys kind of see happening or what are you hoping does not happen? So I've never had a problem with an inspector or a lead robot inspector at any of my events. What? I've had, I've, I just, I'll preface that I've had, issues with other key volunteer roles that have what I would say a bigger impact on, you know, the events. Um, so I, I'd be more worried about th that person or those people um, in those positions. Um, I can definitely see like certain, like everybody brings emotion and bias to an event. You don't want to, I mean, in high school, uh, like I was on a team and, you know, we had prejudice against some teams based off of what the mentor said about them. And uh, Tyler can, you know, back me up on that because, you know, we were on the same team. But, and so like, you, you don't want to bring it, but I think there's going to be issues that might arise from that. And I think it's more other people on other teams being like, hey, I'm going to go grab the robot inspector and bring them over here. And cause like, I don't agree with their, what they're doing. Um, so. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I hope we don't. I mean, Indiana is pretty freaking awesome. Like, I mean, there's a reason everyone goes to IRA every year. And more than just the teams, right? Like, the volunteers, everyone's just super cool in Indiana at the corn. Um, so I really hope we don't see anything like that. Um, you know, it's just going to kind of be on an event-to-event basis, probably. And um, you you hope you don't hear kind of, like, horror stories come out of this season. And, and you really hope that the teams that, like, dedicate tons of people and time to going around and just getting these other robots running at their events and helping them fix things and helping them build entire new mechanisms. Um, You hope that continues, right? Because that is one of just the cool, really cool things about a first event. Like you ask anyone for help and they'll come help you. So I'd hate to see that go away. (laughs) Maybe no. Yeah, maybe. So I think the first you know, scale around the number of issues we're going to see is definitely the game design. Like, there's just some games they put out that really don't incentivize this as much, and other games that really incentivize um, trying to push the boundaries of cheesecake, you know, like the 2017 climbers, the 2016 shot blockers. But uh, I expect to see a lot more season ending decisions coming from LRIs this, you know, next few seasons, or at least the first season where cheesecake's really a thing with these new rules which is not something we've seen a lot of in recent days. Um, I think the last major one I can think of, at least that you know, was Oliver Chief Delphi's, what you were saying earlier with 233, getting disqualified for using batteries as ballast. Uh, you know, maybe it happens once or twice a season, but I think you'll see it happen a lot more. So one of the questions that we got from chat from Big Ben, I'm not gonna even try, uh, was, uh, do you think that there will be fewer early robot reveal videos? Will there be an advantage for teams playing later? So, Tyler, I'm going to bring you on for this one. Oh, sure. Uh, so, reveal videos have been a big question on fun in regards to, like, what is fun doing for uh, Premiere Night um, in future years? And if you're not familiar with Premiere Night, uh, it's when we bring on tons and tons of teams to show off their robot reveal videos. Uh, and last year we had, what, 95,000 people on Twitch watch, that sort of thing. Um, mm. So it's a big deal to us on fun, right, <laughs> what happens with that. And I'd be interested to hear from the teams. I, I think Adam Z from 973 is the only team that does a reveal video typically, right? 125 does too sometimes. Um, so I, I think it's really going to come down to it depends, right? Who knows where the heck teams are going to be by the end of uh, – the the what the traditional build season is but the one thing i'll tell you is uh we are still planning on doing premiere night uh we do plan on being front page of twitch for that so hopefully you can join us for that um <laughs> and you'll actually get a couple extra days anyways because with no hard stop and that you now have more time with your robot so we hope you join us uh but i'd be interested to hear what the uh, other uh teams have to say in regards to like i mean do you guys have any clues is that something you even think about at this point really that's kind of my thought <laughs> I, I think this brings up a topic that hasn't really been talked about. Um, you know, maybe you won't see any hesitation to do reveals from a lot of these teams because they're not planning on competing week one or two with the robot that they might already have built that they're planning on competing, you know, week five, six and champs with. So they'll reveal, it just won't be that, you know, phase two robot that they're planning on bringing to champs. Mm-hmm. That's totally fair. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that was the, like our first thought on Wave, what, uh, like when Bag got removed way back when was let's build a robot to win week one while building a robot to win week six and a championship hopefully um so uh like wave does wants to always do a reveal video but like i said before we show up thursday and rebuild our robot so we we never have time to film anything and uh, i'm not a person who likes you know three minute reveal video where two minutes and 30 seconds of it is like kids like manufacturing (laughs) Um, so like, I don't want to show a two minute, 30 minute, a two minute and 30 second video of kids manufacturing thing. And then no robot because we wouldn't have one. Um, I, I know that we might not do a reveal video this year, but, uh, there's a thing that we're, that wave is joining that there'll be an announcement on soonish, hopefully called like the open Alliance. And we're going to be fully open on our bills this year. So, nice. I mean, we're not going to do a reveal, but you'll be able to watch everything we do on on and blogs and stuff like that. So, Ooh, fancy. Um, I think that, I hope that we see more kind of like teaser videos, like the poofs used to give out like in 2013, like the crazy fast climb, like that type of stuff, I think would be really cool to see throughout the season. Like you were saying, like if your robot's going to be completely different for your, you know, week five event versus your week one, like 
it'd be really sick to put out a teaser like right before your event like oh like we're showing up to this event like here's something completely different that you'll see from us all right and for our last question that i just minimize oh this is a great one and so lando 05 or yep 0527 wants to know what is your favorite and it's with a u so clearly he's from canada um what's your favorite frc game of all time no pressure here <laughs> uh you know it's hard to say this after seeing so many years and playing so many and being at a different point in my life at each one um but i either 04 or 06 um i'd really love to to play a game similar to 04 again i don't feel like any of the games past that have a similar dynamic of just giving teams an overwhelming amount of things to do that were all still valuable uh i don't think we've seen so much de design diversity as we have uh since that game i love that game so much <laughs> uh Which one? ryan 04 yeah 04 was crazy it was like the mix of all the ideas right <laughs> And your human player game. had to be really good, too. Yeah. yeah, all the teams recruited their basketball players that year. Um, and, and I think it was the first year that robots really did a lot of stuff. Like, there's a clear line between 04 and years before where it just seems a lot more robotic. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, my favorite game was the following year, actually, 2005, because it was the very first time we went 3v3. It just totally changed... FRC, I think. And it was such a good, simple game, right? Like, there just weren't a ton of rules. Everyone was kind of doing the same thing. Um, and there was just so much back and forth with one game piece being placed. The whole, you know, tone and shift of uh, the, the match could shift. Um, it was really exciting to watch. Anyone could walk in and you could explain it and say, we're playing tic-tac-toe with robots. That's it, <laughs> you <Yep>. know? Um, <laughs> so it was a great game. I love that one. That was, that was my last year on... Uh, as a student so it was a cool one yeah that was my last year as a student as well i i really like that game i think it's nostalgia because you know i was the driver it was the last year and i think there was i'd love to go play that game again just because like there was a strategy behind it that my team didn't really get until champs and then we were like wait and then it got so much better and uh yeah uh oh four is definitely i would say my favorite game to play um i'd love to see that re-imaged it was like the last, like Adam said last year, where like there was so much stuff to do, robots could do everything, and uh, but even you know rookies could do a lot. There was stuff they could do to contribute, and I I'm a fan of games where human players have an impact of some kind. So like that uh, Okra game that just got post on Chief Delphi, where they're like legit uh, catapulting dice on the, the field. I think that like I'm like let's just play that in first this year. <laughs> and I, you know, I have a bunch of friends who we talk about what games we would want to see re-imaged or redone. And like, I don't know if it was like FTC or Vex or something. It was like Clean Sweep, just like FRC size robots chucking garbage cans and other large <laughs> from one side of the field. You know, so I think stuff like that would be cool. But definitely, 04 is my favorite game. From I, I'd love to see FRC scale Clean Sweep. You know, the whole field is just a volleyball net. My goal is your side. You know, real simple to build. That that'd just be awesome. Yeah, it'd be like 2003 only smart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we referred to 2003 on my team as Tupperware toss down for, for most yes. of it. Yes, 2003, like our team decided to try and glue rubber to Delrin for our wheels, and like Tyler was the human player that year, and like our first match out, like autonomous started, and it, you know his first year autonomous, and like the robot didn't move but all the rubber on her wheels flew off the back of the robot onto the other side of the field because it just didn't stick to the Delrin. So it was, yeah, it was not the best year for, for Tyler and I's team. Oh man. Epic. So we're going to draw for our winner. Um, so Tyler, why don't you go ahead and do that? Yeah. Hey, before we uh, do, and we'll give you one last chance to type in uh, save that money. Uh, Ryan, uh, we'll give you a little uh, elevator pitch here. Uh, do you want to talk about thrifty <laughs> robot, why people should be looking at this site? Uh, what makes it special? Yeah, so just real quick, you know, I kind of started this thing. It was a fun experiment to uh, see if I could get half-inch hex bearings a little cheaper for teams. Um, you know, a lot of people over the years have said FRC has a sustainability problem, has an issue where uh, funding is a big issue for a lot of teams in this program. Um, so I've started to kind of just find parts that I can 
provide to teams at a, at a lower cost uh, and buy them in bulk quantities, um, except for the sort of bearings, because, yeah, you only need like four of those usually. But um, so, yeah, uh, kind of keep your eyes peeled. We're going to have a few more products roll out here before build season. Uh, I can actually show you one right now. Uh, Tyler, if you want to swap over. So we got a uh, half inch hex hub coming soon. Um, it's going to be under the uh, or at the five dollar limit, I think. So you won't have to put them on your cob and uh, super beefy, a little bit beefier than other hex hubs on the market. So um, that should be pretty cool. We might have that in the next couple of weeks or so. Very cool. All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, draw then uh, for the giveaway once again from the thriftybot.com. And the winner of the swag pack is going to be uh, Blue Destruction. Blue underscore destruction. Congratulations, a subscriber. You know what that means. It means we rigged it for him because they're subscribers. You know, they, they give us money and therefore we rigged it. <laughs> so lots of rigged emotes in chat. Uh, let us know uh, how you feel about our subscribers winning on there. But congratulations. Uh, make sure to reach out to us either in our Discord uh, or here on Twitch uh, with your shipping information. And thanks again to thrippybot.com. Yeah, so that's going to wrap up Roast and Robots for tonight. So thanks for everyone who is helping make this show possible. And a huge thank you to our guests tonight. Um, so I'm going to let you guys kind of fill us in on what you're up to and plug anything that you want to. So Adam, let's start with you. What do you have going on? And give us any plugs. Muted. I was muted. How embarrassing. I've been slowly moving to San Jose for nine months. I've lived here since April, but still haven't fully settled in. Uh, so that's still encompassing a lot of my life. I work at Oris, which is the same place uh, Andy Torrance was hyping a couple weeks ago. Although he kind of did a lot of people dirty because he said Oris had all these great FRC people and then just said Mason and Travis and myself. Uh, and I'm going to do the same thing now because I can't remember everyone's name, but we probably have like 30 really solid FRC alum. Um, Colin Wilson from 2D4, Nick Iyer, uh, you have Travis Yu from 971, and I'm going to insult everyone else that I can't remember right now, but Alvin. a whole bunch. Don't what you guys have oh, Alvin, Alvin Ho? Yeah, Ho. yeah. Who's actually out visiting you right now, I think. I think he's oh. at uh, MIT. So yeah, I, I'm just getting settled in up here with new life. Uh, we're going to try to do great again next year with something new for the season. Um, RC and I have that a lot more streamlined than we did the, the first year we launched it. So we'll, we'll see what happens there. Awesome. Looking forward to it. And Ryan, what about you? Uh, I've been working on thrifty bot in my spare time. Um, <laughs> usually just late at night. Um, 1720 actually has relocated or is in the process of relocating to a new build space before this build season. So we are uh, furiously starting to do that move before <laughs> January. Um, and yeah, just that stuff and hanging out with my kiddos and my family. So <laughs> nice. And Eric, what about you? Life's been crazy the last few months. I was like three days from moving to Texas <laughs> and I didn't. <laughs> Uh, cause my wife decided to keep her job in Wisconsin. So, but we are still selling our house and moving to Oshkosh cause I actually don't live in Oshkosh, which is where wave is based. And I just started a new job, uh, Monday. So life's been crazy for wave. Yeah. I checked, no, uh, wave, uh, we're, we've been trying to move into a high school. Um, but we're hoping to get in this fall, but it's looking like it's going to be next summer cause we got to do a lot of, uh, construction. But yeah, I mean, it's we're going to be a really green team this year. We lost a lot of kids, and so recruiting and getting ready for the season. Mm. Hey, well, getting getting settled into a high school right before or a new space uh, right before kickoff is always a poopy time. So, delaying it and doing construction before you move in, highly recommended. Um, so. That's pretty awesome. You guys have a lot of great stuff going on. I'm excited to see what your teams kind of crank out this season with everything that has changed. Um, and fun fans, we rely on you to keep fun going. So please consider subscribing or donating bits on Twitch or pledging your support on patreon.com forward slash first updates now. Um, the most important thing that you can do is let other people know about fun shows like Roast and Robots and click the follow button. Uh, we also have a Discord, which is full of amazing people, um, over 1,800 of them. So you can join that at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And don't forget to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and the occasional Snapchat takeover on first updates now. So Tyler, let us know who helped support the show this evening. 
Yeah, we got a lot of uh, people since uh, last time we've been on air, so I'll go as quickly as possible and I always apologize if we miss anybody. Uh, bagels with a bunch of bits. Jim Miss 544, two months of support. Grumback Will, 12 months. Uh, Dusty Chicken 11, great name, uh, with a tier one sub. XWO with a few uh, biddies there. Uh, D Fuller, two with a prime sub. Uh, Mecha Muffin with two months of support. Anthony 3175, five months of support. I uh, was curious about uh, the FTC game Skystone as that uh, dropped this past weekend. Uh, I body dropped one with the prime sub. Polywog four with the tier one. K Lowry 1971 prime sub. Redfish for box 9958. Eight months of support. Uh, OMG Robots one 22 months of support. Uh, Ethan Crane with the prime sub. A Morris Fam Girl with the prime sub. Uh, Jeffrey Suko tier one sub. Exalted one with two months of support. Uh, Duncan 610 tier, uh, tier one sub. Blue Destruction, hey, want a giveaway today and a tier one sub. Uh, LJP 737 tier one. Grumpback Will. Uh, with the prime as well too for 12 months support uh sean vaness 1720 20 month support thanks sean uh hydrohawk with uh tier one sub dynex xcs uh tier one nick bone 548 tier one uh xwo with a 16 month support thanks a lot uh red leader with quite a few bits uh for today as well as ljp 737 i know uh c mcbride also dropped uh bits as well today schreiber mr with a tier one sub and hey guys thank you so much uh for keeping fun loud live and independent we'd love to make content for you uh, all the time. We actually have uh, two more shows this week. Uh, tomorrow, if you're into FTC, uh, we have Danny Blau from Anymark on, uh, who's one of the game designers uh, and uh, helped design the feel of the game. So if you're into, F into FTC, 8.30 p.m. Eastern tomorrow, you can catch that uh, with a nice AMA with him and talking about some of the uh, insights into making uh, Skystone the game itself. And on Thursday, we're actually uh, going to be hopping on after uh, the uh, first uh, teaser uh, reveal to discuss it a bit more, speculate, come up with just wild, crazy, dumb things about uh, what the game could be because we're all going to be incorrect anyway, so who cares, right? But um, come join us and uh, just have some fun with it. We'll uh, just throw up the craziest series ever. So thank you, everybody, uh, for all your support here on Fun. Yeah, and on behalf of myself and our producer, Tyler, I just want to thank everybody for tuning in and thank you to all of our moderators in chat, and we'll see you next time on Roast and Robot. So we'll talk to you then. Bye, guys. Bye, Pasta. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.